welcome you to the WCC this week. And this week we come to you from San Francisco. We're on the hilltop at the University of San Francisco. And what a great history there is here. Some of the great names that played here. Bill Russell, Casey Jones, Mike Farmer, the head coach, Phil Wolpert, two times a national champion. There is a great history to be had here. And I'm with my partner who went to school here and, oh, by the way, coached here, Dan Belwamini. And, uh, Dan, really what we have here in LMU and USF today, two teams really in desperate search of a victory. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, you look at both of these teams, and certainly they need a strong win. Uh, Santa Clara came in here and really took care of the Dons on Thursday. And I think Loyola, no, they did beat Santa Clara, and this is a dangerous team. They've got a few injuries, Barry, but... Certainly a team that's uh, dangerous and a team that can win. Well, we are joined by a guy. We talk about your history up here, and I have a little bit of history myself. But we're joined by a guy right now who was inducted into the USF Hall of Fame back in 1982. He played here. He coached here. He was the West Coast Conference Coach of the Year down in San Diego. So he's been around. I think it's fair to say all three of us have been around since this place was a cemetery. <laughs> it's been a long time, Barry. Yeah, I'm time, telling time. you. And we may be along. Three gray hairs we, right here. We may be around long enough for it to be a cemetery again, too. Yeah. Jim Bravelli joins us right now. Jim, we talk about all the great history up here on the Hill, two national champions. To say that they're going to get a national championship back is maybe to, that may be quite a, quite a bit of a long shot, but just to get some of that history back and, and get some of the basketball dominance back, is that ever going to happen up here? Well, yeah, the goal that Rex has, and I think Rex has done a great job since he's been here. You know, they've improved every year. This year, they're striking a little bit with a young team. But, you know, the goal is a conference championship. You know, people, the old uh, alums love to talk about, you know, the NC2A championship. But the first goal here is to get a conference championship. And step by step, uh, you know, Rex has really improved it. And uh, with this young team, you know, they're, they're better than their record, I think. You know, you look at the beginning of the conference here, the BYU game, for example. They were ahead the whole game, game lost at the end at Santa Clara. A couple front ends of the one-on-one -on -one they missed. Could have had that. They played very well at St. Mary's. Now, the other night, uh, for whatever reason, it wasn't there. But, um, you know, you have to give Santa Clara a lot of credit. They came in and played very well here. They, they did. The bottom line is, though, this conference is really a tough conference now. Oh, it sure is. I'll tell you, with the addition of BYU there, and, of course, Gonzaga now, she ranked number eight in the country now. St. Mary's has had a great program with Randy Bennett there for the number of years that he's been there. Done a tremendous job. Uh, you know, now with uh, Loyola, even I tell you, Loyola's been very, very good. I watched them the other night. Forget about the record that they have. Uh, they're a very good basketball team. And Santa Clara, you know, with their seniors, uh, they got great guards, and they're going to be tough to beat down the road. Hey, Jim, talk about the total pitcher up here. There's been there's been some talk of a practice facility. What can they do here to enhance the program? Well, the new athletic director here, Scott Sidwell, he's done an exceptional job since he's come in here. He really has a great uh, vision for uh, Division One basketball here at USF to try and improve it. The facility here has been renovated. It's absolutely beautiful. He's talking about getting a practice facility for this team so they can shoot around any time they want without big worrying deal. about it. That's others. big. That's huge. A lot of programs have it that are top level. And so little by little, by increment, by, you know, this program's going to improve with a lot of vision. All right, bro. Thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. Very good to see you. Jim Ravelli, great player here, great coach, and even more important than that, Dan, a great guy. So, Dan, let's talk about the matchup today. We have LA LMU, we have USF, and you heard Jim Bravelli talk a little bit about LMU. This is a lot better team than their record indicates, and they have one of the better guards in a guard full of good uh, conference, good, full of good guards. Yeah, no, no question about it. I really love the way Anthony Ireland plays, and Ireland is, yeah, he's not a big guy, but boy, is he active in the open court. I mean, he can he can make the jumper. He's, he's got a total game. Look at him pass the ball. He's got the beautiful vision, and I think a guy that, that uh, is capable of putting up 25 30 points so you know we we talked to anthony ireland we had a chance to ask him a few questions we said hey anthony how do you like playing in west coast conference games how important is it for you to play well when the conference starts no i feel like playing wcc teams you just just the feeling you just have much more confidence you get you get like I would well, me personally I just have a different kind of swagger I just I just I don't know I just look at my opponent and just see like I, I feel like he, did, he didn't work as hard as me in the summer so I mean I feel like I have the upper advantage well 
That's Anthony Ireland, and we're going to see a lot of him today. We had a chance to talk with his coach, Max Good, one of our favorite guys. Oh, by the way, wins have been hard to come by, but they had a lot of games on the road. They've had a lot of injuries, and that's what Coach Good addressed in his conversation with Dan Boamini. Well, we can't use that as excuses. You know, excuses just impede your success. I mean, it's foolish to even dwell on that because, uh, you know, everybody at some point or another has excuses. So uh, we don't dwell on that. We just got to, you know, we got to play solid defense. We got to rebound the ball. We got to take care of the ball and we got to take good shots. And, and uh, you know, we got to be disciplined and, and poised and, and, and try to stay the course. You have a tremendous backcourt player in Anthony Ireland. I mean, I, I watch him play all the time, and the guy, I marvel at his abilities. And, and certainly defenses are targeting him, yet he, he's playing well. How, how does he sustain such a high level? Well, he's got a great work ethic. He works very hard in the offseason. He shoots virtually every day. It's a day as rare. He doesn't shoot at least 500 jump shots, even in days off. We can't get him to take days off. And and you, I think you hit part of it on the head. He's getting worn down a little bit, too, because people are really playing physically on him. He hits the ground kind of like Allen Iverson used to uh, when he played for the 76ers. He keeps bouncing up. But it's not only that people aim their defenses at him. Our league is full of good point guards. Case in point, Cody Doolin today is a terrific player, so Anthony's going to have his hands full on the defensive end. I mean, virtually every team in the league has an outstanding point guard, so he doesn't get a night off on, on either end of the floor. And he's diminutive, you know. He's, you know, we list him 5'10", that's probably stretching him an inch or so, but but he's strong-willed, and, and uh, he's always got a positive attitude, and he, he's a very confident kid, but he's a very humble kid, too. He's a great kid to be around. I know you really like this team, and I know you like the guys on this team. You and I have had that conversation. Talk about what this team has done off the floor. I know academically, you know, they, they've gone and taken care of business in the classroom. So how proud of you are this team? Well, I'm very proud of them because they do a lot of things together on their own. They'll call each other and they'll just decide to go to movies together. Or, they, or you know, they may go bowling together. Or they, you know, they, they gather somewhere to watch a particular game. And there's really a closeness on this team. And, and uh, they are nice guys. Unfortunately, sometimes they're nice to their opponents. And, uh, you know, I think the rebound... I think to rebound the ball, uh, we, we're kind of bipolar rebounding the ball. There's been games where we've been exceptional rebounding. There's been other games where we've been totally dominated, and that just can't happen. You know, it, it, this nice guy stuff can only go so far. We always tell them, you need to put your manners in the locker and then take the floor, and then we'll pick them up after the game. And that is LMU coach Max Good when West Coast Conference this week returns. Chris McGee looking at him in the beautiful Geeter and Dave Miller in the studio. They'll get you all caught up on action from all the West Coast Conference play. Welcome back to WCC This Week in Los Angeles. I'm Chris McGee alongside with coach Dave Miller. I know you're ready. I'm ready for some WCC highlights. Let's get to it. We got BYU and St. Mary's getting after it. What a great game. This would end up to be BYU enters the game on a six-game winning streak, and they're ready for the Gales. First half, Carlino, my man. Tyler Hawes for the bucket in the and one. 18-4 BYU run. Still in the first half, 34-25. St. Mary's going to fight back. James Walker, the third. Go ahead, young man. Reverse layup. Gales within seven at the half. We jump to the second half. Gales are hot. Stephen Holt, this guy can absolutely shoot the rock, and he buries the three. Part of 14-4 run. 41-38 St. Mary's. Off and inbounds. Brandon Davies going to drive, slam it. BYU down one. St. Mary's up four. Brad Waldow answers with a jam of his own. St. Mary's up six. Second half, we're tied. Clock winding down. Haas drives for the floater. He drains it. BYU's up two. But here comes Matthew Della Vadova at the buzzer. He hits the half quarter for the win. 18 points, eight assists. Look at it go. St. Mary's defeats BYU 70 to 69. Eighth ranked Gonzaga, the Bulldogs. They're looking for their 19th straight win against the Portland Pilots. The Zags off to a great start this year. First half, Zaga up three, Kevin Pangos. Uses that screen wisely. Knocks down the three. Get four threes on the night. Bulldogs up six. Minute and a half left in the first. Kevin Bailey. Jumper. He led the Pilots with 16. Pilots were down 10 at the half. Second half. Zags up eight. Kelly Olenek. We love him on this show. Gets the entry pass. Lays it in. Can zag up 10. 
Later in the half, Gonzaga up. Olenek. Here he is. He cleans it up with the dunk. He used to battle Robert Sacre in practice. Gonzaga wins big, 71 to 49. Let's go to LMU, Loyola Marymount taking on USD, San Diego. Ashley Hamilton, he's ready to take on the Torero. San Diego's won their first three WCC games. First half, LMU of five. Anthony Ireland, you'll learn about him later in the show. He goes to Hamilton for the dunk, LMU of seven. Later in the first half, San Diego's up one. Christopher Anderson is playing some defense. Steal, bucket, San Diego lead by five at the half. Torero's up nine in the second. And it's all San Diego from here. The dunk, they lead by 11. Later in the second half, I want more defense. The coach loves defense, so let's give it to him. Anderson with the steal. He's going to go all the way for the layup. San Diego's going to win 78 to 70. We got more for you. I know you want it. Santa Clara taking on San Fran. Broncos. USF up on the hill. First half, USF down four. Matt Christensen going to work in the paint. Show us your footwork. Do it. Up and under. Don's within two. But it would be Santa Clara's Kevin Foster's night. He cannot be denied. Look at him go. Use the screen. Buries it. Lead by 11 at the half. Now in the second. Foster's going to stay hot. Off the inbounds. I like this pass. Pass right in his wheelhouse. He would go six for nine from beyond the yard. Broncos lead by 19. Still in the second half. Broncos are running away with it. Who else? It's Foster again. Aliou Harrison. Santa Clara wins the ball game. Going away. 85 to 54. Here's what the conference standings look like. Gonzaga, 4-0. San Diego, 4-0. BYU finally loses their 4-1. Along with St. Mary's, USF still looking for that first conference win. But, Coach, people still talking about Wednesday night's game. St. Mary's, Matthew, Della Vadova. What a comeback and what a shot to win it at the buzzer. Well, it was a tremendous shot. But tremendous point guards always know time and score. And it wasn't a heave. It was knowing how much time was on the clock. You see the inbounds and he knows just when to pull up again not a heave it wasn't luck that's a skill set you see the follow through and then you hear nothing but net noise that young man has a lot to be excited about coach uh, a big non-conference matchup two top 15 teams Gonzaga's traveling to Butler it's gonna be a great one well I think it's great that the Zags get to go into Hinkle Fieldhouse and they're going to be going up against the team Butler ranked 13th in the country and what I like about the Zags they're well balanced they got great bigs in Olenek and Harris then you talk about their guards Pangos and Bell they know when to attack inside they know when to go outside they're extremely well coach and on the road you have to defend and rebound that is a strong shoot of a well-coached team by Mark Few I expect the Zags to gain more national attention and momentum for the WCC Hickory oh you said Hinkle Fieldhouse I was thinking of Norman Dale in Hickory I know you where were they too. filmed Hoosiers. absolutely built in 1928 all right game of the week LMU taking on USF the Lions need a bounce back game well they certainly do but don't let the 0 and 5 conference record surprise you this is a hard scrappy team coached by Rex Walters who was a scrappy player at Kansas they're led by Doolin and Dickerson this is a team that's looking for a win now on the other side Anthony Ireland Ashley Hamilton they've got to do two things for Loyola Maryland amount to get a win they've got to take care of the basketball limit their turnovers and then win the war on the boards they must out rebound the Dons this is going to be a great matchup with two teams LMU seven and one on the road last year in the WCC it is going to be a fun one all right we're talking LMU good things come in small packages Anthony Ireland has been the man for the LMU Lions when we come back we'll introduce you to this talented guard with WCC this week comes Back. BYU sophomore guard Tyler Haas is the WCC Player of the Week after leading the Cougars to a pair of victories. Haas averaged 24 points while connecting on 40% of his three-point tries. Plus, he shot 91% from the free throw line as BYU posted wins over Pepperdine and Santa Clara.
Now, the Lions of LMU got their first WCC win last week when they took down the Santa Clara Broncos. And the guy who led that charge is a talented junior guard from Waterbury, Connecticut, a long way from home. He also happens to be the second leading scorer in the WCC. Let's introduce you to Anthony Ireland. Now he has a chance with just 1.6 seconds to try to ice this thing away. I just remembered, I just remembered that feeling. After the game, knowing I could have, we could have, it would have been a wrap if I just hit the free throw, we could have left. Oh, yeah. Well. That feeling of just like letting my teammates down, letting my family down, letting everybody down, and just, and just learning from it, and just not letting it happen again, not letting that feeling reside in myself again. I just try to keep my composure as much as possible. My teammates believe in me, I believe in myself, my coaching staff believes in me, so that's, I mean, that's all I really need to have confidence. Here's Ireland to three, nails it! They're trading punches right now. Woo! I really can't hear anything. I really, like, I just, I just know the time. I know, I don't, I look at it once, then I know when I can go, when I, when I can't go. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't see, I really don't see anything, I don't hear anything. I'm just focused on the basket. I picked a basketball player when I was like four or five. Cause my dad was a basketball player. We actually played for the same high school coach. So I just tried to follow his footsteps. My city, Waterbury, is filled with guards. It's just filled with guards and everybody knows everybody. So you know who the next person is coming up. You know who your biggest matchup is gonna be. So I mean, it's just, it's good in the long run, but it was coming up, it was definitely a lot of competition. Ireland for three. I just wanted to see something different. I knew there was a whole different world in Waterbury, Connecticut. And I mean, just being exposed to just something different would be a good idea for choosing a college. The Bluff is definitely a spot where I've, not, not as much this year, because I moved off campus, but my freshman year, I found myself there a lot, because it's a beautiful view, it has beautiful scenery, it's when the sun set, it looks nice, the ocean's right there, and it just looks beautiful. It was actually an AAU tournament on LMU campus, so I was like, wow, I've never been to this school, i never heard of it. Well, I was asking my AAU coach, what was it like? And then the next morning, they set up like an unofficial visit, kind of. I came, did a little tour, I met Coach Good, and uh, he had a bunch of cra crazy things to say to me. First thing he said to me was, look at this, oh, who, are, who, are, who is this short guy coming in? Not exact those words, but along that line, who is this short guy coming to step into my office? So ever since then, we just always had a good relationship. I'm definitely lower than most of my opponents and most, and just because, I mean, it's college, everybody's big, so I'm definitely lower, I'm quicker. I feel like I'm, I make decisions quick and I re, I'm able to read defenders, read what they're doing and just play off instincts and just believe in myself, really. His mentality is always whatever it takes to win and I believe I, I've kind of taken up that personality too. Just being on his team, he encourages us to get better because he wants to win at all costs. Pushing people's nerves to the limit. I like doing that because once I see someone get mad, I like to egg them on and get even get them even more angry. So I, and they know they know that's my personality, so they know like, oh, Anthony's just doing this on purpose. Once once you get along with all your teammates off the court, I feel like you gel, you know each other more, and you, it carries on to the court now. I'm definitely trying to be a professional golfer. It's such a hard, difficult sport, and I feel like that's more a sport where you can use your mind in different ways to help you excel. So, I mean, that'd be a good option. It's just filled with so many, so much opportunity. There's just so many connections out here. You can meet so many different people. And it's just, I mean, it's just a, spiritually, it's just a good place to be in. You just feel good about yourself. Come outside, you see the sun shining. You just feel good about everything you're doing. Yes, 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 we got one. Here's a look at the WCC Game of the Week schedule today. It's LMU at USF. That tips off at 1.30 next week. It will be Santa Clara visiting San Diego at 1 p.m. Now, Coach, we just saw that feature on Anthony Ireland. He's the conference's second leading scorer, 20 points a game. He's so much fun to watch. 
He is. And when you look at him, he reminds me of a poor man's Jameer Nelson. He's a guard, an exciting guard in this league that likes to dominate the ball. But as he goes, that's how LMU goes. He's able to score in a variety of ways. He can score in transition and get to the rim. Or he can stop and pop in the mid-range game. He's also an adept, an adept passer that he's able to make the right play at the right time. In talking to some of the assistant coaches in this league, they also spoke to what a high-character guy he is. And as a coach, you want that leader of your team to be high-character, have a high basketball IQ and probably the most important thing I saw he plays the game low to high he keeps a low yep. center of gravity and that's what helps him create for others covered three of his games last year such a competitor such a joy to watch all right that's it for me and coach we'll get you out to USF next thanks for watching and enjoy the game Welcome back to WCC this week. We are just about set to tip it off between USF and LMU. Barry Tompkins and Dan Belwamini alongside. And Danny, USF has got to get help from their big guys. Cole Dickerson right here, Cody Doolin, and Deanne Parker, because quite frankly, the other night, they were dead in the water. Yeah, they better not be uh, this afternoon. And you saw Dickerson, he's got to step up. But how about Cody Doolin? He runs the team. And quite frankly, he's got to look for his opportunity and let the game kind of flow to him and not try to do a little bit too much. He's an outstanding backcourt player. And I think one of the real keys, Barry, for, for the Dons is Dan Parker. He's got a bad wrist, but he's explosive in the open court. He's electric on the outside. And, you know, he's one guy that can score on a one-on-one -on -one move. All right, well, here are some of the numbers on USF. They're 7-11. and 11. They are 0-5. The only team in the conference has not had, had not won a game, and they've lost 10 of 12. Rex Walder talked with us, and he said, different team, different year. You know, last year's team was a different team, unfortunately. Had, had a lot more experience, uh, understood what it took to be successful. Uh, this group, you just got to keep coaching and teaching. You know, we are a young group. Uh, they're trying to find themselves. You know, the thing about conference, they exploit all your weaknesses. They, they really do. They take away what you do best. And uh, the teams that we played have done a pretty good job of that. And up until uh, the other night, I thought we were really competitive, had a chance to win. Obviously, we didn't play very well against Santa Clara, so we got to we got to bounce back from that. All right. Well, really what we have here is two teams in desperate need of a win. One of them is going to go one way this year. The other one is going to go another. And that's what makes this game important.